I love playing music and these are tools to play music on. That's all they are, really. It's an art form. I mean, it's an art form how you carve the neck. It's an art form how you do the inlay work, what the inlay design is, um, wh what the headstock shape is, how you do the tuning pegs, even putting truss rods in or staining or picking wood grade out or doing the joint down the middle or any of that. It's all art form stuff. What you're looking at is a combination of theories that have been put into practice, theories around wood types, around uh, wood drying, around uh, finishing techniques, around the right kind of glues. When it adds up, I should be able to pick it up and get it to ring, right? I mean, anybody can hear that. It sounds wonderful. So there's lots and lots of theories about wood and which ones are tone wood and which ones aren't, and we're applying them all here. We have these skilled wood buyers that do nothing but search the land for the best curly maple. Only about one in a thousand maple trees is really curly, so you've got to really search for it. In terms of how you grade it, uh, I thought when we started it would be graded all the same. You get the luck of the draw, but people would call me and go, now, Paul, you go out and pick me a real nice one out. And so we had to start to grade it into custom, 10 top, artist grade, private stock grade. No, I was in junior high school, uh, soldering jack cords back together in my bedroom, taking a guitar apart and looking at the inside of it and going, there's nothing in it. I couldn't believe there was nothing in it. it you take the pick guard off and there was two little teeny round things and a couple wires and one capacitor. I looked at it, there's nothing in it. So there was a moment where I was in the Sears catalog and there was a Tisco with Del Rey, green sunburst, guitar with four pickups and I realized well you still had to fret it you still had to glue the fretboard and you still had to spray the sunburst you still had to sand the finish still had to wire it still had to wind the pickups they had to do everything I thought why don't you just do it right the first time instead of like okay right because the difference between a, a two thousand dollar guitar and a hundred dollar guitar was you, you did all the same stuff I mean this guitar's got everything on it that, a, that an inexpensive guitar's got on it's just that you pay more attention to each part so well, imagine that you have a shop in a town like Annapolis. You make a guitar a month or a guitar every two months, something like that. Well, most of the musicians don't have the money to get a guitar made. Most of the musicians have guitars they need repaired. So repair work is the core of a, of a guitar shop, a small guitar shop. It's not guitar building. So uh, we would build guitars in between the repair work. The repair work's what got us through. I would get into orders once in a while, maybe once a month or once every two months. I had no idea how I was going to pull these things off when the guitars got ordered, but they eventually ended up in good hands. Anything that was really musical uh, was an inspiration to me. So all the ones that were on my repair bench that were the real deal, the old tellies that have been refretted five times or the old strats, uh, old Les Pauls, Les Paul Juniors, Les Paul Specials. I mean, this body shape, I took and I took a Les Paul Jr. shape and I took a Strat and I laid them on top of each other and I averaged the lines and it didn't work. It was really ugly. And then it took me two years to draw this body shape, which is somewhere between a Strat and a Les Paul Jr. if you look at it, really. I was modifying the shape of a piece of wood. I, wasn't, I did it with originally with a pencil, but then when I cut the piece of wood out, the horn was too long and I kept cutting it back until I got it right. This is known as a PRS shape. I mean, Look, when you're in a band, the first thing you do is you do cover songs. And then eventually you write your own music. And every musician will tell you where they borrowed the feel or the groove or the inspiration. It's the same thing. This is a song, really. There wasn't a guitar making school. I would go to Weaver's Violin and talk to the violin makers there. Or I would go to Ted McCarty and talk to him. Or I would go to repair people like Marty Birch at Washington Music or wherever I could be or go to get that kind of information. They didn't teach it in college. I went, I got in as fast in the mentoring schools as I possibly could. I was the repairman in DC, but I was the guy in Annapolis. So if you could get your guitar repaired in DC or Baltimore, you just stayed there with those repairmen. But if you had the really hard one, they go, ah, oh, damn, I gotta go see Paul. So then they would make the drive. So I got all the really difficult repairs. The explorers that had uh, lost their headstock would be broken off three times and it would be dripping in foxy poxy or, you know, uh, things had been refretted so many times that you could pull the frets out with your fingers. I got all those jobs. We have a very unique 
drying process for our wood here. We're very careful about the woods we pick. This thing's ringing real nice. I mean, you can hear it's all ringing the same note. I mean, it almost sounds hollow, but it's not. Well, if the wood's sopping wet, obviously it's not going to ring, right? If the wood, if the resins in the wood isn't, aren't crystallized, it's not going to ring. What's interesting is the pieces of plywood that have been through our drying process ring after we get done. As far as the stains go, well, the whole staining idea is that you want the, the wood to jump. To stain this blue guitar is very, very different than to stain the yellow and, and brown one. This, this is called Blue Mateo, and this one's called uh, Yellow Tiger, and this one actually has a color on top of the wood, a cherry color on top of the wood. So there are people in this building that have spent their entire careers doing nothing but what you just asked. How do you stain it so it's beautiful? There are people in our private stock department that do, are doing things with wood I've just never seen before. It's just gorgeous. Going out of tune is about something moved. Either the nut grabbed, or the tuning peg moved, or the tension around the peg moved, or the bridge didn't return to the same spot, or the saddle moved, or something moved. And so we run six knife edges, where Floyd Rose runs two knife edges, and very often on the fender ones don't run any knife edges. We run six. There are six little notches in these screws, okay? The second thing is the ball of the string has to be pretty close to the top of the bridge, so the ball of the string's not right there, it's way down in the block, so that the string doesn't stretch up over the saddle. The next thing is it's got to not catch on the saddle, so the saddle has to be smooth, and the edge on the bottom has to be smooth, which we've done. The nut has to be uh, made of a very hard material that won't wear out, but also won't grab the string, and then this has to be locked in place where there's no winds on the peg. Otherwise, you're gonna have a problem. Also, if, if the tuning peg screws on the outside are not tight, it'll go out of tune. So going out of tune is about something moved. Um, I was always making pickups in the old shop. I would have used a brand of pickups, I think, except it put us in a position we couldn't experiment all the time. And, it, and these are the microphones. This is the singer. The guitar is the singer, and these are the microphones. They're magnetic microphones, basically, right? It's like being in a studio and you have the singer there, but, you, but you're locked to one kind of microphone. I don't think it's a real good idea, right? So very often with a model of guitar, we'll change the pickups that we use. What's in the Starlet and what's in this guitar and what's in this guitar are very different. Different microphone to do a different job. And if there are eight guitars in a rack when the lights go out in a concert, if he doesn't grab our guitar, I haven't done my job well enough. So I'm looking to put the right pickups in it for that guitar to do the job that that musician wants him to do. I, I, I look at these clearly as tools for musicians to do a job on, which is they're trying to make their living. This was about getting as many tones as possible out of guitar. This was about doing a version of what I've been playing. This is called a Modern Eagle II, a beautiful guitar. Um, real resonant guitar. This was about I mean, come on, what's this about? It's kind of clear, right? I mean, anybody looks at it goes, oh, I understand. This is a mirror. This was, you know, a uh, stop tailpiece, stubble cutaway version of what this is, really. It's real simple, lightweight guitar. Um, we're sitting in the acoustic guitar area. Um, there's two acoustic projects going on in this building, but this one is for what's going to be the mainline PRS Acoustics, and I'm in here every day looking at guitars, playing with guitars, working with Steve Fisher. I work with Joe Nags every day, I work with the private stock team every day, I check private stock guitars every day. Before this interview, I had to work, go work on a few guitars. My job is to put the right people together and make sure that everybody's taught well, that the whole thing works, and that people are free to be artists. I don't want to you know, restrict what they need to do as artists, otherwise really gifted people won't stay. You know, you're taking super glue somebody one spot <laughs> and not really want to stay there very long, right? Um, I'm involved in the finance of the company, the management of the company, marketing. We've got R&D teams working on all kinds of things, amplifiers. We're working on the acoustic thing. There's not a day goes by that we're not looking at something new in an office. It just is, that's the way around here. There's no better way to understand a guitar than to write a song on it. You know, you'll understand what that guitar is about real fast. Everything that you would hope I was doing for, with this company, I'm doing. I'm, I'm very, very involved. We're rocking and rolling down a new road. <laughs>